to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And yes, my hair looks different. I literally just took the um, took my um, hair out. So it's the real natural hair. I'm gonna go on a run, and then I'm gonna do a whole wash and go and everything else. I haven't done any of that yet. But um, sorry, I feel like I just keep having something in my eye. But anyway. That's not why you're here. Welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner, and we are back again for another Real Housewives of Orange County. And this is season 18, episode six, and it's all called All Up in Gina's Grill. And I kind of mentioned, if you didn't watch last week's recap or the episode, you kind of saw this coming. Um, Gina's comeuppance were about to happen. And literally, if I was going to quickly sum up this episode, everybody mad at Gina. <laughs> like, that's literally what's happening. I mean, the title kind of gives away what's going on, but we kind of want to understand why almost everybody's mad. Because it's not just the obvious people. She's managed to make other people mad in the process. And then the stuff with um, Alexis Bellino slash John Sp Spoke Woman, Spoke, Spoke Woman. Um, or representative, John's representative, and Shannon is becoming more and more of a mess. Um, so, without further ado, though, let's go ahead and get into the episode. Um, it was a cutish episode. I did like that they finally left Orange County, did something different, um, and they went separately. So, I'm not sure how that's gonna. I don't think I. I don't think this cast is divided. In com comparison to like other shows where you see <clears throat> there's a clear divide, but I just think this particular time happened to work out this way. So anyway, we start the episode with Emily and Heather, which is, that in itself is odd because we know Emily and Heather kind of bump heads but right now. They're doing okay. And they're going shopping together and they're recapping what happened at the dinner party. And Emily and what we didn't see what happened was after all that took place, when it came to Shannon and, and Tamara and Alexis Bellino of it all. Um, by the way, I'm going to quit. I, I, I'm just going to start calling her Jesus Jugs because that was like what she was known for. So Jesus Jugs. Because um, <laughs> I mean, hey, whatever. Um, so Emily, basically Emily and Jen got into it at during the dinner because they were trying to wrap things up because everything was already a disaster and that didn't even work um basically emily let her slip show and like continued her attack because i mean that's what it is it is attack on jen um and it <laughs> And Emily's like, yeah, I, might, I should have maybe not said all that. But, like, that's literally how Emily feels. Like, it's not like she was, like, holding back. She was being truthful about how she feels about um, Jen. But what I don't understand is where does this hate come from? Because clearly she does not like Jen at all. And what gets me is that you're well off, too. You're living, you're literally living off of, um, sorry, my cat is being interesting right now. Um, you're literally living off of, you know, Shane's family's wealth. Shane doesn't have to do much as far as working as much. And you don't even, you're not even, a, I don't even think she's a practicing attorney anymore. She hasn't worked in years. So she basically gets to be a housewife. And at the end of the day, let's be real here. I I don't, I mean, I guess I would understand it coming from, no, actually I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't. I, it really is coming off as hateful. And I think I've said that multiple times. Like it's coming off as you are really, really jealous of her. And I don't think you're jealous of just like the, the um, fact that she's being taken care of. And she doesn't have to, you know, um, be independent. Even though you yourself are not independent either at this moment. Um, and basically what happened here is that Heather's checking her because she was being so mean about it. And that's, and Heather, I'm going to get on you about it too. 
Heather, I don't think that that's right that like all you're checking her is back that fact she was being mean about it. So Heather actually pretty much agrees with Emily. And we kind of knew that because I saw this even in the football event. A lot of the girls agree with um, with Emily and Tamara on their, um, how they view Jen. Um, but it's like Heather. <laughs> Heather can't talk either because it's her husband that has the money, not her. Like, what happens if Terry decides to leave you? Like, make it make sense. I, I don't know what I don't know what's coming from. And I think what what it boils down to is yes, we're very aware that Jen may not be financially savvy. Like, if anything, she seems like she's very um, financially illiterate. But what gets me and what bothers me about this whole thing is that you know when you're insulting Jen about her being financially illiterate. You're insulting most of the United States. You know, most people are pretty financially illiterate, right? Like, it, it doesn't take much when it comes to most people. And even to a certain point, uh, uh, <laughs> that's not true all the way. Um, I would say for a lot of people, <laughs> I wouldn't be necessarily one of those people. Some people are, I mean, I, yeah, I feel like most people are one paycheck away. I, and even me. Everyone's, most people in the United States is one paycheck away from being homeless. Or struggling, at least. I wouldn't say homeless. I think that's the extreme. I think there's ways around it or whatever. But of, of being in a basically a bad spot. Which is basically what Jen is in. She's in a bad spot. That's it. That's all. And what basically started all this is because Jen is wearing a Rolex. That was gifted to her. And what Emily is expecting her to do is all the stuff that she has, sell it if you like owe all this money. And over on the other side, while this is happening, Tamara and Jen are hanging out at the, at the beach recapping the event as well. And Jen's like, why is everyone acting like I owe all these people money? And, cause, and, and I will say this too. She does owe some people money, but... Like she, you know, she got evicted. So that's a pretty messed up thing that she's getting evicted. And then the other thing was she actually is on a payment plan when it comes to like her yoga studio. But she has a yoga studio. You know what I mean? So I mean, she's still doing better than most. But it's not, probably not, it's not ideal. You know, she's in limbo. Her divorce is not finalized yet. She was counting on that to get finalized sooner rather than later. And yes, yeah, she's not financially savvy, but she didn't have to be. So, yeah, basically, though, to put it in a bow when it comes to Emily and Heather um, is that she shouldn't have called her like you didn't need to call her dumb, like as, as in a mean way, even though Heather basically called her dumb, too. Which is why I'm like, Heather, girl, what? I, I want to know, and I hope, like, I hope Jen, during the reading, and Jen, I'm talking directly to you. I want you to glow up on these girls like no other on your own. <laughs> and I want you to go off on all these women who got so much to say about your finances. Because I would feel a way if someone was coming at me about my finances. Like, everyone has moments where they're dealing with stuff and they have to work out of it. And I think people keep forgetting the major thing that Jen has a lot of young children. Of everyone on this cast, she's the, one of the only ones that has tons of, like, young children. She's basically single. Like, she's basically a single mom once this divorce happens, you know? Whereas everyone else... Like, even with Tamara, when she had her divorce, like, weren't, like, one, she had, one of her kids was, like, an adult, and then she had two other kids, and that was it. She really only had the two. You know what I mean? And the one kid, 
she still isn't really cool to this day, took the dad's side. So she really only had one child to deal with in herself. And Emily, yeah, you have, it, it, I don't know. It's just, it just really bothers me. But anyway, because <laughs> I just want them to leave Jen alone. Please leave Jen alone. Because Jen is like the sweetest girl. I don't know if she is in real life, but the way she comes off in this show, she seems like a super nice lady and with a really, really good heart. And honestly, a quintessential housewife. So anyway. So Gina, this is also, by the way, I probably should have mentioned this scene, this leading scene is three different scenes all at once. So I mentioned that Shannon, I'm sorry, I mentioned that Heather and um, Emily were together, Tamara and Jim were together. And then, um, then we have Gina and um, Shannon. Well, actually, let me let me reverse it. So, also when Tamara and and um, Tamara and Jim were talking together, Jen actually talked to um, Tamara, telling her that Gina and um, Shannon came over to her house, talking about how Emily has changed. She's been more of a of a bitch since hanging out with Tamara and I mean it's true <laughs> she already was but like I feel like she has turned it up quite a bit more she's turned it up turned it on more but I don't think it's necessarily because she's hanging out with Tamara I think she knew last season she was going to get fired so she's trying to pull up all stops to stay on because we kind of saw Emily was starting to act like this at the reunion and to me it's continuing on I don't think it has anything to do with Tamara I do also think that she does love that she's really really cool with Tamara now because Emily has always come off as super insecure because she clearly is and now she's happy that the popular girl that's Tamara is with her, like, is hanging out with her and she's taking full advantage of it. And Gina sees right through and she's like, we're actually really, we're actual real friends and you're like being weird now. Um, but I don't know if Gina just feels away just because she knows her and Tamara would never be cool like that. Um, or what that is. To me, I just... Uh, uh, I don't want Emily and Gina. I don't want Emily and Gina to be back on after this season. I'll be honest, like, cause I, they really don't bring a lot to this show. Um, Emily, especially. Emily's been coasting this whole time. Um, Gina, at least with this episode, she brought something because she stirred up all this all this conflict. But anyway, so. Um, Tamara's kind of taken aback by that, like, wait, what? Like, what I got to do is how she acts. Like, she's an adult. And uh, I do feel weird that Jen and Tamara are hanging out. Because I feel like, Jen, you're being a little naive. And I think, and maybe Jen is just understands the assignment that this is just what you got to do to be a housewife and she don't really mess with her, really. Because I really hope that's what it is. Because I hope she really isn't thinking that she could trust Tamara. <laughs> I think Gina was just being a housewife here and just like, you know, moving things along, which good job if that's what you're doing. But anyway, Gina, um, the third scene that's happening at the same time, Gina's meeting up with Katie um, at the boutique and Katie still feels away about the Heather and Gina situation as she, as she should. But I will say this though. I think Katie, you really need to let go the whole let go of the whole thing when it comes to you and Heather. It's dumb. Who cares if she called the paparazzi or not? Let it go. I do think you still should be upset with Gina, but I think you need to let go of the whole Heather thing. Let that go. You and Heather need to have a private conversation outside the group. Iron it out. Let it go. Agree to disagree of what you believe and keep it cute. I don't think Heather's going to be okay with that, agree to disagree, but you just need to let it go. And not to mention the paparazzi thing again, because <laughs> it, it's really, it, it's this, no one cared about last season, we don't care about this season. Anyway, um, and so, 
Um, Heather, while this is happening, Heather back with um, Emily is still upset with how Gina has been acting and how she's been moving and, you know, finding out that like Gina knew about Katie and her plan to like mention this months ago and didn't do anything about it. And side note, so <laughs> Gina, I hope you realized towards the end of this episode when you were saying that Katie was lying, you got caught in that lie. You, you were lying. So I forgot to mention why um, she is lying. The reason why I think she's lying about this is literally last week when Heather asked about um, how long she knew about Katie um, and these accusations regarding the paparazzi, she said for a couple of months. And so now she's backtracking. She backtracks later on the episode saying that she um, talked to Katie about it like within a day or two before she did what she did. And to me, that doesn't make any sense. Um, even Emily said that didn't make any sense, by the way. So there is that. And Emily's her best friend. You're lying. Um, <laughs> we'll just say that. Um, but anyway. So Emily's trying to reason with her, saying like, hey, maybe she's just dealing with a lot because of the Travis situation. We know that ain't true. I think, honestly, Gina stirred up this conflict because she knew that that Travis situation wasn't going to be enough to keep her on the show. Because no one cares about it. Yep. She did this on purpose. Um, and... You know, Heather is calling out because she doesn't appreciate someone who's calling her a friend, a close friend, using her as a plot device. Because, I mean, that's really what she did here. Anyway. <clears throat> so, Shannon does join Katie and Gina back at the boutique. And Shannon does mention that she officially did get the lawsuit. So, um... John Jansen is suing her for $75,000 plus court costs, plus interest, um, plus attorney's fees. Yeah. And, um, you know, Shannon mentioned she did not sleep well after what happened, like at the dinner, which would, I would, I would, that made sense to me. I wouldn't either. And what bothered her more wasn't really the Alexis Polino of it all. She kind of was like, eh, I didn't expect anything better from her. Um, which I wouldn't either, but she was more shocked by how Tamara was acting during that dinner. And, um, so while this is happening, Jen and Tamara are talking about also, and <clears throat> Jen is like in her confessional, she's like, I just really wish Tamara would just like wheel it in a little bit. You ain't gotta be that ugh, on it. And, you know, she mentions like, I don't, you know, I've been on that side the same side that Shan's been on with Tamara, and it doesn't feel good. <laughs> it feels horrible. And, you know, she's just like, I just wish she would just, and Tamara, from her perspective, she's like, Shan is lying. I just wish she would take accountability. And I hate to say this, I kind of do agree with Tamara. I don't think Shan is taking full accountability. But Tamara's not helping. Tamara is literally doing the most and doing what Tamara does, being selfish and making this her storyline. Because um, that's what Tamara does. She never does, she rarely ever, especially since she's came back, she doesn't, she doesn't have her own storyline. She uses someone else's storyline and makes it hers by being extra angry at how they're acting and being really judgmental about it. Which, I mean, this is like a it's a rinse, it's a rinse dry repeat. Of like last season. But this time instead of it being Jen. It's Shannon. Anyway. So. Gina is worried. And you know she. Gina expresses her worry to Shannon. That she doesn't want. Um, Tamara to be the callous. Of her going backwards. When it comes to her trying to be better. When it comes to drinking. And. Um. And, and, you know, basically Shannon reassures Tamara ain't doing nothing. <laughs> if anything, I think we would be, I would be more worried about Shannon and her 
um, sobriety or even like her trying to do better when it comes to controlling how much she consumes. Um, I'll be more concerned about the John Jansen thing, not really the Tamara thing. Um, but at the same time, because Shannon's in denial of whether she has a problem or not, it's really Shannon's problem to, you know, blunder at this point. Um, but still up to this point, Shan seems like she is in a decent place. It's just, I am a little worried and it does give me pause that she did not go to rehab at all. I, and, but I don't know if she necessarily needed to go to rehab, but at the same time, the way she was like kind of glamorizing how much drinking was such a part of her family's life growing up. That kind of worries me. Like as someone who, cause, and I'm speaking from kind of my own experience, I've had issues where like drinking was a problem. I would not call myself an alcoholic though. Cause I, I actually can stop drinking like, and I have. And I, I've already shared this. I do this like at least twice a year where I don't drink for a month. I do full on detox. Like I just, you know, I'm, I'm actually in one right now. I'm not drinking right now at all. And also too, I just have moments where I just don't desire. So then I just don't do it, <laughs> you know? And um, my thing is, I don't know if Shannon could do that. And if you can't really do that, I don't know. I'm a little, that, that's, that's troublesome. That would be troublesome if she actually is someone who cannot even do that, you know, have the discipline to be able to not drink like for long periods of time, you know, or even control it. And it seems like on the show she is right now, but my only thing that really gives, I guess, me pause on her, that whole thing is I think she's still on probation, so she's not really supposed to be drinking at all. That's the other thing. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so we do find that at the end of this scene that half the ladies are going to La Quinta, um, and then half the ladies are going to Tamara's house in Big Bear. So Tamara, um, Katie, Alexis, and Jen are going to go to Big Bear while we have, um, Gina... Emily, Shannon, and Heather going to um, La Quinta. And Gina's thing with La Quinta is she actually is the realtor for um, Elizabeth, one of her friends that she met along the way, um, and selling her, her, her mansion, basically. And so they're going to stay the night there and then go from there. I don't think that's a great idea, and we'll talk about it a little bit later on. But, like, that's what they're doing. So, both these events are going to be happening at the same time, but just different parts of California, basically. That was it. So, um, basically, there's the Housewives montage where we see Heather at Emily's. So, he, sorry, Heather at Shannon's house getting ready to go to Gina's event, um, which, by the way, I love to see it. I love that um, Shannon and Heather actually seem like they're getting along. So that's good. And then Shane's letting Emily know she doesn't want anyone to eat in his car while how the late, um, which is how the ladies are actually going to be getting to La Quinta. They're all going to be carpooling with um, Emily and Emily's taking Shane's car or Shane's truck. And um, Gina meets, and by the way, it's a two hour drive, um, we find out from where they stay in Orange County. Cause this is really close to like the LA area and they're in Orange County. So this is about two hour wait, it's two hour drive. And, um, hold on. I need to double check one thing here. Child, I'm distracted. Happy Saturday, by the way, but I'm totally distracted. Anyway, <laughs> I was like, well, how did the lighting change in here? It's kind of cloudy today and I still need to actually work out. And I'm kind of like, oh, how am I going to do that? But anyway, sorry, I got distracted. So, um, basically, um, on the other side, we have the ladies meeting, um, at, meeting Tamara at her place in Orange County to go to Big Bear. So that is, um, Jen, Alexis, and Katie. And 
I do like seeing that Katie and Jen are becoming really close friends. Um, I, I like that a lot. Um, I think they could be the two that replace Emily and Gina when it comes to the friendship thing. I kind of want that to happen, actually. Because, <laughs> I mean, they're similar age group. They seem like they'll be so fun together. Um, and they were. Um, just to kind of give a heads up. They were very, very fun together. Um, they actually made it where Tamara's um, girls trip actually... I would prefer to go to Tamara's girls trip over Gina's. And I didn't think I would be... I didn't think that would be how it would go. I thought I would prefer being a Gina's thing because the other women. But no, I, ra I would have rather been over with Tamara. Because one thing about Tamara, she may not be the best person or the nicest person. She knows how to have a good time. <laughs> it seems like she just knows how to have a good time. And, you know, for this show's purpose, and I think even maybe Jen is like this with Tamara. Be friendly with her, but don't be friends with her. That way you can still have a good time. And had, you know, and, and and then, but don't get too much in the business. That's the way to go. Anyway. And I think looking back, I think Emily wish she would have been with Tamara too. Um, <laughs> I'm giving you a preview of how this episode's going. But anyway. So they're all on their way there in their cars, respective cars going to different events. And... Alexis in the car will not shut the hell up about John. She's talking about John and Christian. John and Christian. By Christian, I mean Christianity. Like she is living up to her name being called Jesus Jugs. And everyone is just like, oh my God. <laughs> everyone in the car is like. <laughs> Even a Tamara joke, but I don't think she was joking. She's like, I just kind of want to push her out of this car. <laughs> She was being annoying. It was, it was it was given too much, and still at this point, and this has been my problem with Alexis this whole entire time. No one knows her. She just keeps talking about John and Jesus, but no one knows anything about her. Anyway, um, so while this is happening, all back over in Shane's car. None of them follow the rules. They went immediately to Jack in the Box and they all got them some food. And they were slamming it. <laughs> I was like, dang. But anyway, so they all end up arriving at their respective places. I will say this. Tamara's place at Big Bear looks beautiful. Um, if you're into like the rugged, more woods, nature-y type stuff, it's, um, it's gorgeous. Um, she did discover, though, they did discover while she was there that she has a leak and she was upset because she just, she renovated the place. Like, the place prior to them getting it and renovating it, it, we saw the before pictures, they showed it. It was, hasn't been re renovated since the 80s. Um, but she did find out she got a leak. The leak doesn't look like it's that bad a leak, so they can figure it out. Um, but I don't know. <laughs> and then on the other side, they do arrive at Elizabeth's place. And Elizabeth is there to greet them. And so she's aware they're going to be there. No worries there. I was way more concerned about that because I was like, I don't know if someone will be cool with, you know, you being at their house if they're trying to sell the house. But, you know, it's free advertising for her, her place. Um, and maybe that's how she viewed it. But <laughs> what ends up happening later, Gina did not think this through. So Gina's literally the whole entire time is like on edge because she realized Idea wise, it seemed like a good idea, but in practice, this was not a good idea. This was actually a really dumb idea. Cause they're, you know, they brought food, like, cause they're basically doing like a sleepover. So they brought food, they brought a grill, they're making drinks, they're spilling the drinks everywhere. Like, so basically, Gina had to constantly clean things up, freaking out, cause she basically has to show this house pretty soon. And so the house is ready to show, but like, they're kind of messing it up. Which is very counter, like, to me it tells me she doesn't really take this real estate stuff seriously at all. Like, to me. I ain't gonna hold you. 
Like, if you took it really, really seriously, you would not. Some of these things that you think is a good idea would never, wouldn't even get past the cutting, cutting, you know, floor. But anyway. So, oh, side note, Elizabeth's place was definitely more in the luxe. Um, definitely um, Heather's, up Heather and Shannon's alley. Cause them two are the ones that make the coins on this show. Definitely worth their, on, on that level of things. Um, and so back at the so back over at a big bear, the ladies get ready to go sledding and Tamara's still taking these little mini digs at, um, Jen and her, her confessional, which is annoying, but I just kind of let it go, but they did go sledding and they look like they were having a good time. And I was kind of jealous. I wanted to be, it's, I wanted to go sledding. <laughs> the sledding did look fun. That did look fun. Um, it kind of reminded me when I was, um, younger, I went to bargaining, like it was kind of a similar thing. Like I would, I would enjoy that kind of thing. So yeah, the girls look, the girls looking cute and they were going sledding and then back over and the, what Tamara was doing is way more active. I guess for me, when I go on vacation or go away, I like more active vacations. So Tamara's vacations to me would be more fun just because of that. And Gina's is more about eating food, drinking, and their food was like kind of like grilling out type stuff. Whereas Tamara and them did have food, but they went out to dinner and, and got some, you know, some food at a restaurant. That would be more my style of vacationing to me. I, I you know, that's just me. But anyway, um, so then also too, on the Tamara side, they don't have the conflict. On the Gina side, half of them are mad at her. <laughs> well, Heather's mad. At this point, Heather's the only one that's mad at Gina. Um, so they're kind of, so it's tense. Um, anyway, so then um, back at Big Bear, Alexis is being, has been annoying the whole entire time, by the way. She won't shut up. She just keeps talking, being annoying. And then she takes the opportunity to... Um, FaceTime, um, Famous Hungry, um, John. So he makes an appearance. And I kind of, I ain't gonna hold you. I tuned it all out. Because I was so annoyed that he was even on the show. Because he's getting what he wants. He's getting it through Alexis. Um, and then on the other side, we have um, Shannon making herself a drink. Which, again, I'm sighing it. Like, I just... I kind of, it would have been a better look if she just stayed sober this whole season. I'll, I'll be honest. Um, it would be. Because they only filmed for what, three months? Tops? You can't, you can't not, you can't not drink for three months. Especially 2024. I'll be honest, because there's mocktails that you can make so that you still feel included. Because I guess for me, when I had the problem, when my when my problem was making was a lot worse, a lot of what made it hard for me to let it go was like, it's such a social thing. But now today they have NA, they have so many good NA beers. Um, I actually went out last weekend and I had um, a couple NA beers and it was fine. Um, they have so many cool NA like cocktails and they'll serve in literally the same glass as if it's like a regular drink. Like there's things you could do to freak it so you can just like not drink. And during the pandemic, because I was afraid I was going to become an alcoholic during the pandemic, I just start drinking tons and tons of sparkling water. I've cut that back by quite a bit because carbonized um, anything, carbonized drinks are not good for your teeth. So I had to cut that back. <laughs> Cause you know, health for me is number one. But anyway, um, so Shannon does seem relaxed though. I will say that she does seem relaxed and she does think G um, she is happy that Gina invited her to this. And she does talk to Emily and she does state to Emily, I'm happy that we're in a good place. But then she does, she tells Emily what was said, similar to what Jen, you know, told Tamara. Shannon is telling Emily what Gina said about 
how different she's been acting. And Emily is pissed. Emily is so, 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 so mad at Gina. And um, she can't even hide it. She's so pissed. To the point where everyone can tell she's mad. And Shannon's like, I did not want her to be that upset. But at the same time, if you got something to say to someone, just say it to their face. Don't talk about behind their back. And points taken. And what is up? What? Why Emily's so upset? It's just like you couldn't have told me that to my face. Like that's literally what it was. Um, and so now there's more attention because Shannon is the only one who's not mad, Gina. <laughs> At this event. Um, so yeah. And then while this is happening simultaneously, they're talking about, Katie's talking about how she's upset with Gina at the dinner that they're having, because they're at dinner at this point now, um, in Big Bear. And basically Tamara stayed obvious. She was like, girl, Gina set you up. That's Housewives 101. She set you up. I mean, Tamara's not wrong, but this is the only thing that gets me about this whole thing. Um, the way Tamara and Emily kind of are getting off completely scot-free of this whole thing. Number one, that's Tamara one-on-one right there. Because Tamara, that's been historically how she's been the whole entire time she's ever been on Housewives. She will light a match be the one to stir it up, but somehow, some way, it will get linked on someone else, but not her. Even though Emily and Tamara were the ones who brought it to Heather's attention to begin with. Instead of Katie going to Heather first. Because you know if Katie would went to Heather first about it, I don't think it would have blew up as badly as it did. It blew up because Tamara and Emily went to her about it first. And they're getting off scot-free when it comes to that. But at the same time, <clears throat> Gina, we know, we know that Gina knew about this months ago and didn't say anything. And waited until they were on camera for all this to like transpire. So, yeah, Gina, Gina set her up, um, like badly. Anyway, so then while this is happening, um, basically Emily sits down, like they're all eating dinner, but they're, it's so quiet, it's so awkward. Emily finally says, like, calls out what Gina said about her and Gina completely denies it, even though. It, but then she tries to say, well, no, this is what I said. And like, Emily's like, no, that's not like, and then Shannon's like, no, no, that's not what you said. But then somehow, some way, I don't know, Emily was extra annoyed by this. And she was said in her confessional, she's like, of course, this happened this way. The moment that Emily could have had where she could have had some conflict on this show and there could have been like something, a storyline. Heather stepped over it and they start going at it. So now it's Heather and Gina going at it and like <laughs> Emily, the one who set it all off, is back in the background again. I know Emily was heated by it. But I mean, if you felt a way about it, and this is what gets me, like. I know Heather gets them together in the way, in the only, only the way that Heather can get you together. But if that would have been me, I'm sorry, but if I'm mad at someone, I'm like, Arr! I know you got your conflict with her. You can put a pin in that. I'm talking directly to you. That's what been, that would have been me. Because let's be real, none of these California girls, if they got confronted, like how someone from Atlanta would confront you, none of them got, got anything for that. None of them. And that's all they needed. That's all really Emily 
needed to do to make, to bring it back to resolving their conflict. But that didn't, so basically Emily's still mad at Gina and it didn't get resolved at all there. And it went all the way to Gina and, and Gina and Heather are just going back and forth now. And then somehow Gina, somehow, not Gina, but somehow Heather compared her whole paparazzi thing and how it affected her kids to the CPS thing that Shannon said about Gina. And Heather, girl, that is a reach. That's not the same at all. At all. Bowling housewives, that, that kind of thing happens. <laughs> I promise you, that's such a housewives thing. So, um, anyway, Heather says she's going to give her a chance one more time, but she's not going to forget. And um, she basically says, like, Gina needs to prove herself by actions, not by her words. And on the other side, we have, um, so back at Big Bear, the ladies kind of, you know, put it, they're, they're, they're not really talk. they didn't really talk about the Gina thing too much. They went back to talking about, um, cause also throughout this whole entire episode, um, Tamara's been joking, but also shading. And I really wish um Jen would catch it she's not catching it um but I think she's also kind of bring, bring some humor into it too um about you know she needs to start making money and start doing OnlyFans so they were joking about yeah I need to start OnlyFans so they leave the dinner and again they're um big they're bear onesies so they all have these matching bear onesies that they're wearing back at the um back at Tamara's house and um, they joke. They basically film her doing a foot video, and it was kind of gross. It was actually really, really gross. And me and Katie, we were here when it came to that, and when it came to like, okay, that's kind of gross, but it was funny. And um, also, too, um, it does end. So the episode ends basically where. Jen asks Alexis, when will it stop? Like, you're still doing the most when it comes to this John thing. Like, you're still being John's representative. And because Alexis, aka Jesus Jokes, because Jesus Jokes is dumb as hell, she doesn't realize that what the ladies are pretty much trying to say to you is like, we don't know you. We want to know you. Stop talking so much about this John situation and making someone else's business, your storyline, you're coming off desperate, which she is desperate because we find out why Alexis is doing all this, <clears throat> partially. She basically says she's always going to defend him because, you know, her mom passed away recently and my condolences to you about your mom passing away. And she says that John was the only one that was there for her after that happened. And I'm like, there it is. So, you're seeing him as your knight in shining armor, and you're basically going to be his representative to death and be a pick me. But we already knew this about Alexis that she's a pick me, because she was a pick me originally when she was on the show, but it was her ex husband. And um, so, yeah. And basically, she alludes to. John has the receipts to really, really end um, Shannon. Um, all videos when it comes to like what happened the night of that, that DUI. And that's dirty. That is dirty. And even Jim was like, you know, how's that going to affect your kids and stuff? That's really messed up. Like, do we really need to know everything that happened there? I don't think we do. And Jen, keep Jen. I will say this, keep Jen on this show. I love Jen on this show for that reason. Because she's like, this is wrong. It's all wrong. But anyway, that's how the episode ends, though. It's going to get worse. <laughs> and um, yeah, half of y'all that are on the show, you need to thank Shannon. Because you wouldn't be on the show without her. Including you, um, Jesus Jugs. 
You would have no reason to be on this show and be, you wouldn't even been invited back if it wasn't for Shannon. So maybe you should like pay, like, so the appearances you're making for being friends up, maybe you should give all that to Shannon when you're done because you wouldn't even be on the show if it wasn't for her. Anyway, that does conclude my video for today. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mellow Nostalgic Brother, and I will see you next time. Bye.